Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdillahu fala mudilla la wa may yudlil fala hadiya wa nashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa nashhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'd wa qad qala Allah ta'ala fil qur'an al majid a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون قال الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الخلق عيال الله فمن أحسن إلى عياله أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم My dear respected brothers sisters and youngsters we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every favor and ni'mah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And one of the greatest favor which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, it is deen al-Islam, having iman and all the other favors which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And every day we should say alhamdulillah and be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the many favors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us Islam as a means and as a guide. And in doing so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established justice in Islam. And when we look at the institution of justice in Islam, in each area, in each facet, in each aspect of, a li of the life of a Muslim, there is justice. But what is justice? When we speak about justice, we speak about that of impartiality. We speak about fairness. And the opposite of that is injustice unfair. Now we must understand that each of these things as a Muslim, they have consequences. When a person is fair and he is just in Islam, then there is great reward. And when a person is unjust, then also there is great punishment for those who are unjust. And this is one thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, if it is that the person is unjust in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give that person justice on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says he's ahkam al hakimin the just of all judges. In the Holy Quran in Surah Na 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 Nahl, in verse 90, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he speaks about justice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he explains justice as, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim bismillahi rahman rahim Inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan. وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْرِ يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has ordered إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْعَقْرِ He has ordered you with justice and not only justice وَالْإِحْسَانِ and kindness وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى and that of helping relatives, helping family, or according to some riwayat, it is mentioned, joining family ties. وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ And he has prohibited from fahsha, he has prohibited from that of, that of immorality, وَالْمُنْكَرِ and that of evil, وَالْبَغْرِ and that of tyranny, oppression. That perhaps you may be you may take heed that perhaps it may be a reminder. So when we look at it in Surah Nahr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He reminds us, in Allah Bil Adl. Verily, Allah He has ordered you with justice. Now, really and truly, justice can be divided into three aspects. One is a person fulfilling justice, you know, in his capacity. So for example, as an individual, as a person, there will be people who will have rights over me, whether it be my wife, whether it be my children, whether it be my employer, whether it be my employee, whichever aspect in life we, be, we, we fit, fit into, whichever sector or whichever part of the society we fall into, we will have to fulfill the rights of people. And in fulfilling those rights, we should be just. 
So that is one aspect of justice. The second aspect of justice, when a person has to exercise justice, is in the aspect of when a person, he is being um, asked to, to, let's say, to be an arbitrator in a matter, or he is asked to, let's say, fulfill a task, right? And he has to be just in making a just decision, making a just judgment. He has to be fair in that decision. This is the second aspect of being just. So, for example, and we will see even in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, when he had to do, deal with this. So, if a person has to be like a judge, a person has to be an arbitrator, a person has to judge between two individuals, he's also instructed to fulfill justice and carrying out his duty. And the third aspect of justice, it is when a person, um, let's say, for example, is fulfilling a punishment, he has to carry out the punishment. So, for example, a person may have to punish his, his worker, he may have to, that, that is those under him, right? He may have to punish his worker, he may have to punish his children. And when we say punish, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, necessary lashes, but there may be some form of punishment that the, has to be carried out. And in fulfilling that also, a person has to make sure that he is just in fulfilling it. So for example, just to give you an example, let's say someone has committed a crime and you're entrusted to punish that person, whatever the punishment may be, then the punishment which you hand down to this person, which is given to this person, must equate, must equate to the, 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 the wrong that that person would have done. If it is that you go beyond that, then that also can be considered to be injustice, whether it be with our children, whether it be with regards to our employees, whatever the case, or our subordinates, even as a teacher, we have to be careful because sometimes, you know, a child may do something, but in doing that thing, the punishment that may be, you know, given to that child, it may not be equated to the, um, to the, 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 the wrong that that child would have done. It is better it is less than more. Right, because even in you giving a um, uh, harder or harsher punishment for the thing that they would have, the person would have done, it can create the injustice. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the Holy Quran He tells us, "Inna Allah ya'murukum bil adl." Verily, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has ordered you bil adl, with justice, being fair, being fair-minded in all aspects. Whether it be the first aspect, would it mean that we are fulfilling our rights to people, right? What it is that it refers to whether we have to act as a, an arbitrator, we have to act as a judge, we have to act as a witness that we be just in our, in our affairs, or whether it be that we have to hand out a punishment, it is that we have to be just. Well, ihsan and kindness, what do we mean by kindness? Kindness, it means that a person he is a part of our character because when we look at Islam, there is mu'amalat, there's mu'asharat and there's ibadat. Ibadat and, and they, they, their worship. So Islam, basically, these things are divided into three. So we have those things which is dealing with our worship, like, for example, our salah, our zakah, our fasting. Then we have those things which is dealing with our business transactions. And then we have those things which are dealing with our social, trans our social dealings, how we deal with people. And part of our dealing with people, our social dealings, it is other, it is justice, you know? And the next thing is kindness to people. How are we kind to our fellow human being? How are we kind to our spouses? How are we kind to our children? You know, sometimes even though it may, it may be better sometimes that the person when executing a punishment that they of themselves be lighter in the punishment, they execute the punishment, but lighter in the punishment than being harsh, right? Wa'ita is al qurba and bringing family ties, joining family ties, or helping family relatives. Wa'ita al qurba and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, Wa yanha an al fahsha. He has prohibited us from immorality. You know, well, munkar and munkar here refers to that which is known as evil. You know, evil deeds. Well, baghi and tyranny. So the opposite of justice is injustice. The opposite of justice is oppression. So in this, baghi refers to oppression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has prohibited us from being oppressive, that being a tyrant. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, la that, ya la that perhaps you may take heed because I, I'm telling you, my dear respected brothers and sisters and youngsters, 
the punishment for being unjust, the punishment for being unfair, it is not an easy one. And I will give you an example. One of the things that a lot of times a lot of people get carried away with is that we think that once a person would have committed any form of injustice, that that will be the end of it. That will be the end of, okay, I have you know, committed a form of injustice and that is the end of it. My dear respective brothers, elders and sisters and youngsters, one of the things that happen many a times is that sometimes we do not even know what is injustice. But what is justice and what is injustice? In Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each individual rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each individual rights. And these rights are not instituted by the law of the land. These rights are instituted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has explained to us time and time again, the rights of parents over children. The parents, they have rights over their children. The children have rights over their parents. So, for example, what are some of the rights? Because in order for us to understand what is injustice, we must understand what is the rights when it is that I break these rights. So, for example, the rights that the parent have over the child is that the, the parent has to provide food, clothing, and shelter for that child. The parent have to educate that child. The parent have to give that child good upbringing, good manner, mannerism, you know, to get the child married. All of these things are the responsibility that the peer, that the, the, the rights that the child has over the parent. But if it is, let's say, for example, the parent is not fulfilling this right, or let's say, for example, they are not fulfilling as it ought to be fulfilled, that that also could become a form of injustice, as simple as it is. So, for example, let's say a child is deserving of, let's say, an education, and you're depriving that child of an education, let's say an Islamic education, you're speaking about especially an Islamic education, and that child is deprived of that, that is a form of injustice. Why is it a form of injustice? Because on the day of Yawm al Qiyamah, when it is that child stands before Allah, and that child do not know to perform salah, that child do not know, to, um, did not know how to fast, the child will say, my mother did not teach me, my father did not teach me, and they will lay that blame on you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you to give an account. Why? Because injustice have been, as has been committed in that case. And that is why it is very important that we be very particular about what is justice and injustice. If let's say, for example, on the other hand, a parent, a child, the pair, it is to take care of their parents, fulfill their rights, do their khidmat, take care of them. And if it is that, especially when a child that that parent has reached old age. You do not take care of that parent. When it is that you know they ask you to do simple chores, you do not do these chores. You're neglectful in doing the chores or you're disrespectful to them. That also can be considered to be injustice. Why? Because of the fact that that is the right that the parent have over you and you have not fulfilled that right. So you will be held accountable. And in help, being held accountable on the day of judgment, you will be have, you will have to answer for that injustice that was committed on the day of your Malkiyam. Another aspect is, for example, let's say a person is placed as a judge, as a corby. He is placed as an administrator. He is placed as a parent in a situation. And here it is, there is a dispute. Here it is that there is differences of opinion. Then in this, even in this, if a matter is brought before you as a parent or as a leader or as a as an administrator, whatever the case is, is that you have to look at the situation and you have to deal with it in a just manner. Because if you do not deal with it in a just manner, then this will be held against you on the day of Yawm al -Qiyama. This situation will be held against you on the day of Yawm al -Qiyama and you will have to answer for it. And I just would like to read um, for you a verse in Surah Maida, verse 8, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he explains about the seriousness of being unjust and how simple unjust, how simple a person can be in unjust. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, o you who believe, kunu qawwameena lillahi shuhada'i bil qist. That o you who believe, kunu, stand firm, 
be steadfast qawwamina lillah in for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stand firm for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because many a times one of the reasons that people are unjust it is because of the fact that one sometimes in fulfilling their responsibility they take preference over their desire so especially you know sometimes even your family members you're called upon to full to be just it can be sometimes your own children sometimes you like one child over the other and that sometimes because you you give favoritism over one child over the other then in this in itself it is a form of injustice and when a person does this it is because of his desire that is why even when you're just you have to go against your desires at time you have to look at things in a holistic way not because this is my favorite child or this is my favorite employer or this is my friend you will choose so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us he says ya ayuhal ladina amanu who you believe unu qawwamina lillah that you should stand up for allah when it is that you you're standing up for justice stand up for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right then he says shuhada'i bil qist that you be a shuhada you be a witness who is just you be a witness who is just because many a times as i said what happens sometimes a child will come to complain to you the bigger one may come and complain about the smaller one and what you will do it is because of maybe you like the smaller one over the bigger one you will you will neglect the complaint or you will reject the complaint of the older one and you will give preference to the smaller one this is injustice also and you have to be very careful as simple as that is or for example it may be the other way around sometimes you may give preference to the big one over the small one or you may like one child over the other and this sometimes create problems mm -hmm. so i will just give you a story which is mentioned in the the two sahihain that is the the the, the book of imam bukhari and imam muslim where it is nu'man ibn bashir who was a companion of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that my father had given me a gift and his mother who her name was amra bin rawaha you know she objected because when it is that you know he called her he says look i'm giving my son who is bashir um, nu'man ibn bashir that i'm giving him a gift so she objected and she says that the only way I will accept it is if you go before rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and make him a witness of giving that gift subhanallah so his father nu'man ibn bashir his father he went to the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he told the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam look i would like to give my son this gift and i would like you to be the witness the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked do you have any other offspring do you have any other children and he said yes he says and have you given them a gift and he replied in the neg negative he says no i have not given them a gift so the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says he says i will not be a witness of this i will not be a witness of this situation now we may look at that as simple why it is that the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not want to be a witness of that because in his eyes and he considered that to be unjust why because you're giving one child and you're not giving the other and this is why even with our children we have to be very very careful you know many times what happens sometimes we will give one child and tell the one child do not let the other children know this is not fair if it is that we are giving a gift and we cannot give all of them then better we do not give them at all or we we separate it and we divide it in such a way that each one of them will get you know the gift obviously we are not saying that if you have to give them a gift you have to give them the identical thing because it may happen that this one may like something other than and that one may like something but at the same time we should be just so even in this scenario in this case the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told he, he told him he says that i will not be a witness of this right because of the fact that there was injustice so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayat he says shuhada'i bil qist that you should be a witness who is just and this does not only reply to be a witness but sometimes a person may call you to be an arbitrator in a matter they may call you listen there is two brothers having a dispute and in this dispute sometimes it could be two brothers sometimes it could be your own family members sometimes it be maybe your which is that So sometimes it can be your own family members that you may be called upon to be an arbitrator. 
Sometimes it can be your own relative. Sometimes it might be your own children. They may call you as an arbitrator. And in this, in this, you have to be just. Because if you're not just, you will be held accountable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah. And it's a very simple thing. If it is that you feel to yourself that I cannot be just in this matter, I feel to myself that, listen, I will take sides, then it is better you refer that to another person. Do not be an arbitrator in a matter when you know that you will not be able to be just in that matter. The other thing is that when it is that the person, well, let's continue. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا قَوَّامِينَ لِلَّهِ شُهَدَاءِ بِالْقِسْتِ وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُوا قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا وَهُوَ أَقْرَبُوا لِلتَّقْوَىٰ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he continued to mention in Surah Ma'idah, he says, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُوا قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا Do not allow, do not allow the, 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 the enmity, the hatred of people prevent you from being just. What does this mean? Many a times we will find that a person in a situation, he's angry with someone. And this is another point that I would like to get to. He's angry with someone. And because of his anger, in making a decision, in making a judgment, he makes an unfair, an unjust decision. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, that do not allow, do not ever allow the enmity, the hatred for a person. Sometimes a person may come to you, or let's say, for example, another case may be brought to you, but maybe you don't like this person for some reason or the other. And because of the fact that you don't like that person, your decision will become impartial. We have to be very careful about this. Why? Because in doing so, if it, if it is that in our decision, it is, there's impartiality, there is biasness, right? Then what happens is that we will be held accountable for, for that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا That do not allow the hatred and the enmity of people prevent you from being just. وَهُوَ أَقْرَبُ taqwa, And that is the closest thing to taqwa. Because really and truly, Allah knows what is in our heart. Allah knows why we make a decision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we were trying to be just in our matters rather than being unjust. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah and fear Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Verily Allah, He's khabir, He's well informed بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ with regards to what you do. So it is very important that even when we are, let's say for example, we are called upon to decide in a matter, whether it be with our spouses, whether it be with regards to our children, whether it be with regards to you know, an employee, whatever is the situation, and we have to make a decision. One is that we should not be the arbitrator of a matter when it is that we are angry. You know, so sometimes even with our children, sometimes they may do something. They may do something that, you know, causes us to become angry. At that time, yes, we want to hand them a punishment. We want to give them some penalty. We want to give them some punishment. But at that time, is not the best time. Because why? Most of the time in doing so, we will be unjust. Most of the time, we will be unjust. Why? Because you're angry. Your emotions is there. And this now causes the, 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 the person's judgment to become impaired. So what happens is that he will give a punishment exceeding the crime that that person would have committed. So this is why it is important that we do not we, we do not give judgments, right? We do not, you know, give a sanction or hand down, you know, a judgment when it is that we're angry. It is better that we cool off, right, and deal with it. Another point, as I mentioned also, is with regards to if it is that we have any enmity with the person and we fear that we will not be we will not be fair, we will not be just in the matter, then it is better that we forward that to someone else for them to deal with that matter. And if it is, let's say, for example, it be our own children, it be our own children, we should not be unjust in even the matter. That is why the Prophet ﷺ in one narration, he says that even if it is that Hazrat Fatima, who is his daughter, if it is that she stole, he will also ensure that her hand is cut off showing that there is no impartiality, meaning 
that the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam wants to make sure that he is just because my dear respected brothers when it is that we are unjust that will not rest in this world but it will be taken in the hereafter in closing one of the things i would like to mention is when as muslims when it is that we are we find our ourselves and ourselves in situation with our family members and we have to execute that thing which is called justice one of the things that we must be very very careful about is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of my decision and if it is that i'm unjust in any way i will be held accountable because on the day of yawm al qiyamah on the day of judgment the scale will be set up in for those people who are unjust and there will be a special court for those who are unjust and that court it is mentioned in the narration of the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam that that court will even include the animals even the animals the animals who had horns the animals who inflicted harm on the other animals they will also be given justice on the day of yawm al qiyamah and not only will they be able to give justice but then when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them justice allah will cause them to turn into dust now as for us there is no opportunity of us turning into dust how it will work the first thing is that if a person comes with a claim that we were unjust to them in this world and they have not forgiven us then we will have to recompense that person for the injustice we will have to recompense that person for the injustice and how simple it may sound but it is very severe because on that day of yawm al qiyamah when the scales of justice are set up a person will only be allowed to pay with their good deeds there will be no other currency that the person can trade it is mentioned that the person he will wish that he can give all of this world for the injustice that he would have committed in this world but on that day the only thing that he will be able to pay with it is his good deeds his salah his fasting his zakat on another note if it is that let's say for example he do not have sufficient good deeds to pay then what will happen is that he will take the burden of that one he who, who he had oppressed in this world he will take that burden on his shoulder and that will not be no light burden as a matter of fact one of the very important things that we even overlook it is the aspect of asking for forgiveness many a times we may commit injustice and we don't even know but when we you know we settle down and we become calm then we realize how unjust we were in doing so it is important for us to ask for forgiveness ask for forgiveness if we were unjust to our spouse ask for forgiveness if we were unjust to our children ask for forgiveness make it up if it is that someone comes and asks us for forgiveness now on the other hand on the flip side of it if someone comes and say brother you know i was unjust to you or sister i was unjust to you can you please forgive me then we should find it in our hearts that we forgive them because as i said to take any matter into the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to injustice then it is very 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 severe and inshallah in closing what i would like to also mention is that when we are faced with a situation when we are faced with a situation and we have to execute that justice the first thing that we should do is remember that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of each and everything we do whatever we say whatever we do allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of each and everything so in doing so this now develops that quality of taqwa wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin